Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ewa Oluwa Ritsu and Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye. What's hey up? How are you doing? I was waiting for something. <laughs> <laughs> What's Go good, guys? Ife, mm -hmm. we're good. And you? I'm good. Obviously, you guys look good. I always oh, do. We always do. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Mm. Be proud. It's okay. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. Why don't you sorry. flick yours too? Oh, it's all right. Ah, I see swag up from the back to the front. So, yeah, keep them. Malias, no manners. You know, this, I period. Know, this, this doesn't look like a Malian. I don't understand that Malian. But I'm what. saying I'm a Malian. No. So, there's a this different way to find out about Malian. Yeah. There's a different way to find out about Malians mm. now. Today is what? Wednesday. Mm. So did you hear about the Malian cult? The girls. About the mother who came out to say that I got a daughter. That was way cult. long ago. Yeah. Yes, now so it's it's still ongoing. Oh, we want to ask if she's wearing. Okay. Right. Oh, moving on. Move on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tyler Perry says there will be other projects in the studio that are not Tyler Perry labeled where he will be able to provide writers room and opportunities for other writers after facing a backlash for preferring to pen his own branded TV series alone. Perry recently found himself at the center of controversy after trying to highlight his strong work ethic by revealing he does not have writers room for dramas like they have and they have not, the Oval and Sisters. Mm. And I think um, we, I, I like the way he addressed it because it made a lot of sense. For me, it made a lot of sense. This is his dream. He has his audience. He knows his audience. He knows what they want. Mm. According to him, he has been trying to build the audience for 25 good years. So I'm sure he knows exactly what to deliver to them. Mm -hmm. So now if he's trying to say, okay, I want to give jobs to people, and then according to him, when, people, when he tried to use other writers, he had low ratings, and then his audience were like really disappointed. He's a businessman. There's a purpose for what he's doing. He has his reason. Mm. He has his plan. He has his dream. So I mean, I, I totally agree with him. And like, like he said, there are opportunities in other movies and whatever. It's not like he's shutting the door against any writer or anybody. So, I mean, that's his dream. Let him leave it. I totally agree with Elwa on this one because at the end of the day, it's um, your focus as a creative. It's mm. your... It's what you plan, what you envision, your dream. So mm. if you cannot deliver what you... Because a writer's room, things will be changed, obviously. Yeah. Certain people will have different opinions. They'll be like, why don't we do it this way? Mm. But when you were writing that script, you had a vision for yeah. what you, you were writing. You had the message you want you to had pass. the message you had in mind. But people will change it. Mm. And at the end of the day, you find out that whatever they are giving to you is not exactly what you want. You but they have worked. Mm. So you have to pay them mm. and still change it. So it's not like you're paying them for their contribution because you're not even using their contribution mm. in the first place. So you're paying them for, okay, your label. Do you understand? So I understand where it's coming from, but at the end of the day, it's not just about you, bro. Mm. At the end of the day, that's why I said there are other opportunities. about writing solo. You see things entirely from just from your, your own, own point of view. From yeah. your own point of view, you can be very versatile, be mm. creative, bring in some twists here and there, but. Mm. It, your what you see, I mean the world is so big that your your experience is mm. really you have to broaden minimal. your horizon, you spread you. your That's tentacles. The word I'm looking for broadening your horizon. But like Elwa rightly said, it is business. And if this is what is working for his audience, then mm. I mean let it go. Then he should find people of like minds that mm. have his vision. I, yeah, I was going to go there. I think the problem is the first set of people, or maybe the second set of people, or the people he has tried. The writers. The writers, the he uh, got really disappointed. That's why it's like, okay, you know what? I'll just do this myself. Well, this is the message I want to pass with this particular show. Mm -hmm. So every other thing, you guys can, you know, get involved in. But you see, this series that is about um, my own thinking, my own dream, what I see about life, mm -hmm. this is how I want it to be. So. What do you guys think about I Fall From Grace, though? Okay. <laughs> For me. Um, hmm. partially. Oh, goodness. God, it's fair. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you know I don't see movies at once, so I've seen it partially and I've seen it by mouth say it, by hearsay. Sorry. Yeah, well, please watch it. Yeah, I mean it's a great movie for me. I would say it's a great movie, great delivery, mm -hmm. and um, great delivery, really. Yeah. Okay, great delivery, bad costumes. 
why? Fair, you've why? not seen the you've movie. Not, why do you think that? You didn't let her come. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't think um, anything when it comes to the costume or whatever. I really don't find the fault in that. The wigs are cool. That's what he wanted the person to look like. That's what he wanted the character to look like. The fact that that's not who the character is in real life and you prefer the character bound does not mean. I mean, he had, like, he read, that's why he does not like to bring writers in <laughs> because if people start changing things for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a great movie. I like the story. There's a lot of lessons to learn there. But I think it's just really overhyped. It's not something special mm -hmm. that. We've not seen it. Honestly, it was a story that I knew where it was going to end. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so um, the twist at the okay, let's not bring any spoilers. Mm. No, but bring it, bring it, bring it on. <laughs> please, so I can add to my no. knowledge. <laughs> but I feel like what is going on right now is um, the effect of the studio he launched. So after that mm. massive studio that is on, I think, 330 acres of land. The expectation from Tyler Perry was really went high, high mm. and this is not the kind of movie that comes out after such feats. You know, I heard it was shot in, in five, five days, days. Mm. and in fact, the whole story around the movie is making you feel like this is like a Nollywood effort movie. I'm sorry, it's not a shade, but that's how it felt. Like, mm. let me let me come to Tyler's defense. Is, hold on, you know where it is going before it starts and all that. And the good thing people are also talking about is Crystal Fox, the um, lead character. She's mm. been acting for over 40 years or mm. 40 years thereabouts. And that's that her she first. Dies. That's her first lead role ever. Never. So, I mean, it was something of impact for him, and he felt like she deserved it. it I mean, it's just so weird. For 40 whole years, and this is your first, first lead, lead role. role, but then that's a good thing going for the movie. He says it's all about impact. Uh, even the same interview, he was talking about the writer's thing. He mentioned it too. Mm. It was about impact and all that. However, I feel like more needs to be done. I appreciate Tyler Perry. I like that he uses his platform to bring to fore the issues, but some people are of the opinion also that he now paints the black woman and or the black men in a particular stereotype. I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people say that. Like, for me, I feel like this did not just get to... The twist was not just there. It wasn't just so deep. Honestly, the, it was a very regular movie. It was just regular. So I, I, and when I saw people, you know, reposting a movie to see, a movie to watch... Okay. And then again, the title of Fall from Grace, what you would expect. <laughs> like, even if your head was running wild, you would never expect the storyline for that title. So it was more like Grace, Grace was the character Grace. Mm. But in your head, you're thinking of the But if you watch the grace trailer, they be. say not everybody deserves Grace. And they call it trailer. And sorry, they call it trailer. Um, what's the, the horror movie thing? What's that um, genre for horror movie? What's it called? Horror. Horror. I don't know. There's something. Something else I'll remember when I remember, but that's the category. And people are wondering how exactly is this movie in that category? No, for me, I mean, I think it's a great movie. If it was just a movie that you know I saw, mm -hmm. but the hype was just too much, yes. you need to watch it, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I saw it, I'm like, okay, I already know what will happen at the end of this movie. Mm -hmm. You said something about him, you know, painting the black people a certain way. Honestly, I think. It's, a, it's the bitter truth that is very hard to swallow. Yeah. It's what he it is. He also said that it's, a true, it's, it's, it's inspired by a true life story because mm. there was apparently a, a mother and a son in Atlanta, mm. I hope I'm getting that right, yeah. that was conning um, older women. women of their money. So he read that story and that inspired some parts of I mean, I, I don't even know the story yeah. you're saying now, but honestly, like most of his movies, if you look at it, it's just what is happening, is reality. Mm -hmm. But people, you know, people like to shy away from the truth and feel People like, like happy endings. You know? <laughs> but well, not, I don't think I'm even expecting a happy ending mm -hmm. from Tyler Perry's movie. <laughs> I, it never I that happens. happens. It's always but very controversial. There's just, there's just something not... Let me come to his defense based on... Um, I understand understand that you guys said the plot, the twist was mm. not enough, the suspense was not enough and all that, but let me come to his defense in terms of production because mm. people are saying that, okay, he just opened this massive studio, mm. so his production is supposed to be, his production is supposed to be top notch and all of that, but when you have everything going on in your space, you make do of everything you have and this studio is still brand new some things are not yet in place mm. like that, really? yeah Oh, okay. Because right yeah, now you don't expect <laughs> you don't you don't expect a Tyler Perry to go and start paying for location right now. So he's using all his space. Is is uh, what's it called now? What's that word? Is improvising. Do you understand? He's making use of his own 
platform, his own space, his own everything. And you not think going... whatever you have on the 330 acres is not enough? Do you know how big it is? Hold on, hold on. It's... Honestly, when it comes to um, like the location and whatever, I, do... I don't have a problem with location. Problem. No, with I don't the think location. anybody Any... had a problem with the location. It was, it was, no, the set was they very said, perfect. They said it was obvious that it was all shot in nah, one place. Like, I've, I've read a lot of reviews on this, the good, the bad. I don't think anybody had a problem with it. No, I saw that. So I Are saw. you serious? Yeah. I mean, that person needs... That the courtroom <laughs> was the same location that is like he used a, a gray paint for location for what for the courtroom uh, for the apartment for the offices the oh, oh, did, I, no, okay, that person let, let's even hold on how is that even possible <laughs> was for a five day short movie that person because you have to paint <laughs> and it will dry yes, and that's what they're saying is this substandard um, what's it called stages for no, each no that's, that's not that's true because well, if you use it was part of the reviews I saw them. oh really okay. All right. I don't think that's true you can add comments and say, see, it's very review because that's yeah. absolutely not possible. Yeah. If you said the movie was shot in three months, then maybe there'll be space to say, I'm managing a studio, then when this scene is done, I have to create another mm. scene. No, you don't time create, you just move. You've you created move. all these things together. In five days. You just said something about painting and changing the color. Using the same room days. for the courts, um, the city room. Do you know how office? big the room is? No, it has different stages. Well, the, um, let's I just know. move on from this story because okay. I think the we're taking too much time. The only thought in that movie is like, the story. Yeah. It was just too basic. Okay, okay. let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West has revealed his struggles with alcohol and devil during his transition journey to being a Christian. Speaking at a prayer rally in Arizona, tagged Awaken 2020, he opened on, on how oh, he opened up on how his spiritual journey with God helped his mental condition and saved him from alcohol. He said, and I quote, "But Jesus saves. No matter how long you've been away, no matter how long you've been in the dark, the light is right there, ready to save you, to give you the." Confidence and the code. That's like a part of his yeah. um, speech. So <laughs> this man is going full blown pastor. I'm but if I come back to you. A big shout out to Kanye West because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, we all beat the devil one way or another. They say, right. um, fight your demons, conquer mm -hmm. your demon. If alcohol is his demon, mm -hmm. and we've seen erratic um, Kanye West, we've seen um, irresponsible Kanye West, we've seen the Kanye, the Kanye West that will all be like, what's up, what's wrong with this guy? Do you mm -hmm. understand? And then we're seeing a different Kanye West entirely, so maybe he's telling us that alcohol was my problem then. And fight your demon, if alcohol was his demon, and if by that you're beating the devil every day, you may have other demons, but at least you're beating one at the moment, so it's one step at a time. So, big shout out to him for that. I'm sure we all have demons, we're fighting on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I like the message. I like the fact that it gave hope to people. No matter how long, no matter mm -hmm. what it is that you've been doing, there is grace and you can be saved. Mm -hmm. So Kanye, keep doing the good work of God. He's, okay. and for me, honestly, I feel like Kanye is doing what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Mm -hmm. To be honest. When will you start doing what Kanye is doing? <laughs> I'm getting there. Kanye said, no matter how long it takes, right? So okay, I'm getting so there. I want to highlight something he says in his speech. He, mm. he said, okay, I, of course, I won't be able to say the way he said it exactly, but it was something in the line of, so, for example, let's use alcohol. So you're battling alcohol, right? And each day you're able to make yourself not take that cup or pick up that bottle mm. that it is a win for you. You're winning the battle, you're winning the demon, you're winning the devil at that point. So it doesn't matter if maybe after three months you see yourself relapsing. The, mm. the real thing is for you to be able to still pick yourself back up and continue that struggle. You can't give up and say, oh, um, I'm back done. Like, it, I'm yeah. back at it. God cannot help me anymore. Regardless of how many times you fall, it's the grace process. is always there. So don't don't just let go of the process. It's mm. always a process. You're not going to just stop immediately. Something will mm. happen. Triggers will happen. But be able to pick yourself back up and still mm. find your way back to that path. That's what I would like to highlight for anyone struggling with any Anything. form of demon. I don't mm. know what it is. I mm. don't know. It, it could be alcohol. It could be something entirely different that people don't even understand. Mm. But just keep fighting. It's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we definitely have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now. Wow. And that determines my next step. 
Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Right oh, yeah. I yeah. trust Steve in Africa. We're feeling good. No time to do it. Everybody feeling all right. Bye. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. This is the time on Plus TV Africa. Davido reacts to tweets implying he's not the father of Ifa <clears throat> Okay, so I think this was a photoshopped to, um, tweet. Mm. I'm not quite sure. Obviously. No, uh, there's no matter of it, not quite sure. I don't uh, think David is a stupid person. Like, even if you're going to reply anyone, we really be cameo little lawyer that you know will leak your DM. Let's, that was let's, a tweet. It was a tweet. Yeah, it was a tweet. So yeah, it, it was, was, a, it was no, a photoshop. It was yeah. a tweet replying to cameo little lawyer. Mm. An old tweet. On the yeah, timeline, yeah. So how can a David do now, be like, that I stupid? mean, when I was, I, it was first of all, I knew that. Sorry that, to even come that was not You fair. know, at the time she tweeted that thing, if mm. I had not been born. Mm. Yeah. So that that's just to show you that. Now nah, nah, I'm not even real. sure if I'm the father of, like, come on, that doesn't even sound like But David. honestly, I've seen a lot of... There was no shake me in that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of um, people, you know, come to say, you need to confirm um, if I is your son. And I feel like it's just really... Rude. People and need to stop. Yeah, it's just it's just too much. You don't uh, you don't just take people's family issue anyhow and think you can just put your mouth. I mean, no matter what it is, it, nothing has been confirmed. Mm. Nothing is sure, um, sure, or hundred percent. And then you're just this, just there saying all sort of things. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? If I, I mean, come on. Well, you know, last stop. last the video that caused this trouble for himself. Right. If you did not go to tweet, <laughs> to tell somebody that's crackhead. Uncle was out with that the tweet that caused this whole trouble. But it's yeah, just, people need yeah. to at least give him space. I'm wondering what's whatever is happening to that issue though, because nobody's speaking. Oh, it's still ongoing anymore. actually. It's still ongoing, but nobody's talking anymore. Mm. We're not in the basketballs. I thought so. Oh, it's basketballs. You know, yes. they are not in court. That's the main part. It's not I the basketballs. It's the money that's important. And did you I watch Kemi Olinoyo's video on the show? People are actually still talking about oh, it. It's I not as... Yeah, really she came video. out. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, you know, she was retired and then she had to come and address the issue because a lot of bloggers were using her name, as she said, Choma and Peruzzi had the thing. And she came out to clarify that even if you guys want to report anything, it was an old tweet from me and she said what she said but reported the way she said it mm -hmm. she did say that choma and um Peruzzi, they are currently having an affair or mm. whatever it is what she said is choma they were, they were not they were lovers and not, not cousins. cousins so they should report it the way she said it. and she touched on um the case um going the ongoing on. case yeah that's for the music um thing and she made a lot of sense she was saying she she, she i think she was advising david to not yeah. let this get to the point where patrick has to sue so because that would be very um, dangerous or not good for his yeah, career. Yeah, like that, Sony so. will probably have yeah, to pay up because it's that. just not as as um, large as it was, but mm. it's expected. Let's see how it goes. All right. Um, CEO of Anna Cole and filmmaker Edith F. Young compares Beyonce with Wally Shoyinka in a generational relevance conversation, and some people are not having it. Here's what he said. Just had a weird moment when someone said Wally Shoyinka is the greatest living Nigerian writer, and my internal loyalty disagreed because Beyonce never quoted Uncle Wally Shoyinka. Generational relevance has an outsized impact in the perception of greatness. The Nobel Prize had huge relevance on my parents' generation. For the generation after mine, Beyoncé has bigger impact. Cultural relevance is way different to institutional recognition. End of quotes. <coughs> okay, so I don't know who <laughs> the best writer is in Nigeria mm -hmm. or whatever, but I don't understand what this guy is saying. Is Beyoncé now what we're using to measure who is a great writer or not? Because if Beyoncé does not quote you... Oh, a relevant writer. Oh, a relevant writer. Mm. I don't know what he's on, but for me, this is nonsense. Wow. Okay, yeah. so for me, I feel like he... He probably did not pick the right person to make the comparison, mm. but and I get where he's coming from. Right. So something he said at the last part where he said um, generational, generational relevance mm. is different from institutional recognition. So we mm. cannot take um, the fact that Wally Shoyinka is an icon, he's someone people look up to, his works are being studied. I mean, he's respected, right? You can't take that away. But mm. now, 
if you want to talk about the influence that he can still have on some certain things. Now, you know, you mentioned cultural behavior. So cultural behavior is not necessarily politics. It's not necessarily how uh, uh, we see things from the angle of appearance. It's how the youths of now, people that are the working generation of now, see things and what they embrace. So if a, do you know if a Naramali comes out to say something now, and Iwale Shoenka comes out. I hope we don't get that battle, though. But if it happens, you know that is going to be a huge conversation. Why will it be a huge conversation? If that happened like two years ago, Nayamali would be slammed left, right, center. But there's this influence that we've all agreed that Nayamali has built that seems intoxicating, and it's still there. So there will be people that will come out to say, Baba, go and rest, your time is gone, and this is it. But it still doesn't take away the fact that he is an institution, and you cannot take that away. So I get where he's coming from. It takes a lot of breaking down to be able to, it, it cannot go in just tweets, you know, but I feel like I get exactly where he's coming from. I totally from. disagree. I get where he's coming from. <laughs> I get the generational relevance, but bringing Naira Mali and Wale Shoenka, I was a, making a... No, a, no, I understand, I understand. So I'm saying that <laughs> even if a Naira Mali mm -hmm. to put out a tweet about something that is a societal issue mm. and the world is showing her issue. Amongst those that are, that are educated and are smart, I'm not saying Naramali is not educated, but I'm talking about the elites. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the people. Those that know better. Those that know better mm. will still go with the world is showing her before they even think about Naramali. Honestly. So even when Naramali is making sense. Even when yes. he is making sense. Now, you know you mentioned something now. You said those that know better, which is why sometimes when the conversation starts and they say youths are not being given a chance, it is the same youths that will come out to tell you that the youth no, don't no, even no. know well, let me tell you no, why no, 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 he's talking about, he's not talking about youth, um, youth or older people. I mean, I'm, I, I'm a youth and mm -hmm. I know better if mm -hmm. Wale Shoenka is speaking and in Naramali is speaking. So this is not age. And we are Malias. Hold on. You know, I didn't mention, you know, I didn't mention anything about who is saying something yeah, right yeah. or wrong. No, we totally but in, Hold on, I'm saying in the grand scheme of things, I say, you remember I said, this is not about what our parents think. Yeah. or how they feel it should be yeah. done. It's about what is attainable yeah. now. Yeah. So if a Naramali comes out to speak on what is attainable now, and we know he makes sense, mm. um, he has not said anything, and then a Walisha Inka comes to speak on that same issue based on what was attainable when he was growing up. I'm sorry, there will be a huge conversation going on. I'm not saying this person will get more support or not, country, but there will be a great conversation going on. This is one on. country that regardless of our generation, regardless of our exposure, we mm -hmm. still believe so much in culture. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So even Walisha Inka is talking about what was that attainable mm -hmm. then, trust me, it is still applicable to all of us because mm -hmm. we respect culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, apart from I'm not arguing control, what you're saying. I'm I saying like it is part of the conversation. Say, okay, yeah, give the youth a chance. Lash give a like 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 yeah, chance. Honestly, no matter how you want to give the youth a chance, let the youth do this. There. The elders what are the is you, What a child can see sitting, let me sound like Peter Duce now. What a child can, can see, see standing, standing on, on the mm. tree. An elderly yeah, man who sits lying down. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I guess where he's coming from and I guess where you are coming we from. It's do. a Malian vibe. Anyway, that's our wrap up <laughs> this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can watch this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel and please subscribe at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ewa Luo Ritu and Ife Oluo Shunke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin.